So finding a man who won't murder you, but will protect you is a really big deal. And just because it's been going on traditionally for thousands of years, doesn't make it any less remarkable. But as the saying goes, familiarity breeds contempt. And I think a lot of women have become so familiar with their safety that they actually now have contempt for those who have kept them safe and are keeping them safe. Hello everyone, my name is Jennifer Molsky. This is my YouTube channel. So let's talk about submission and let's start this talk with a question. The question is, why do women typically want a taller man as a partner? The answer, I'll tell you as far as I see, is to feel small and actually not even to feel small, but to be smaller by comparison. But why does size even matter? Because we women are generally smaller than men and innately want that emphasized. Women's preference to be with a larger man is one of the last of society's tipping of the hat to the admission to and appreciation of the actual differences of the sexes. Most people accept that women prefer taller men, but society tends to glaze over the reason why. And if asked to explain, I wouldn't be surprised if they lent an aesthetic reason that women like taller men because of how they look. But to me, that's low hanging fruit thinking. See, women want to feel small and feminine. It's in our DNA. Standing next to a man who is physically bigger is an easy way to emphasize and remind ourselves of our differences. We are safe around him, but what is he around us? Women are more physically vulnerable. So to find a man who will protect you and appreciate that, not exploit it, that's not a small deal. And by the way, do you know how hot it is to know that your big strong man could kill you in like two punches, but he won't? Instead, he'll protect you? That's unbelievable. I can't imagine how that feels as a man to know that you could take up pretty much any woman, but you won't. The restraint a man must wield is remarkable. What does it say about men? To me, well, that's one of the reasons I like the patriarchy. They have so much power and so much reason. Now, I, I know it might seem weird for me to say that out loud because I've never heard anyone say it or think it or admit it. I don't know. But as a woman who is married, I love to know that he's stronger than me. And I think most women, if they thought about it and they were honest about it, they would agree. So finding a man who won't murder you, but will protect you is a really big deal. And just because it's been going on traditionally for thousands of years, doesn't make it any less remarkable. But as the saying goes, familiarity breeds contempt. And I think a lot of women have become so familiar with their safety that they actually now have contempt for those who have kept them safe and are keeping them safe. And that's a very dangerous line of thinking for an individual to hold, let alone an entire society or big portion of society. We have to remember why we feel safe and to play our part in promoting its continuation. Not only are many women contemptuous about men in general, but they are stingy on holding up their end of the bargain when they find a noble one. Because a lot of women don't think they have their end of the bargain. And maybe that's where the contention comes in. There is much pushback over the necessity and allure of what a taller man represents. To women, the size of a man is an outward expression of an inward characteristic or essence. And that's not always true, mind you. But we hope for it and we kind of suss out tall men and maybe put them on our radar a little bit faster than their shorter counterparts. But we often, if reasonable and smart, fall in love with a shorter than tall man because they turn out to be the essence of what we're looking for. But I want to stick with this analogy, okay? To find a man who is what a real woman wants requires a trade. Unlike the fairy tales, you don't get the attention of and keep a quality man just because of your beauty, your hair, your nails, your boobs, although those things help. You should, you should be prepared to give more. We need to make it fair. And everyone's screaming about equality right now, but equality doesn't mean the same. If I have a two carat diamond and you have a two carat diamond and they're graded the same, why would we trade? We, do, we wouldn't be getting anything from each other. It's totally pointless. The bummer to me is that women are being taught that men want the same thing as what a woman wants. And that's pretty much a lie. Just like some men think that just because they care so much about looks and sweetness, women do too. It's verging on propaganda. So as in fairy tales, as is in life, <laughs> you have to be a fair maiden in order to gain the affection, protection, attention, and loyalty of a dragon slayer. Like that's my jam, the dragon slayer. 
you have to hold up your end of the bargain, and that is to be the fair maiden. So let's change direction really quick so I can expound on what I just said. There's only a few main roles in a fairy tale. The notables, the archetypes, if you will. So the woman who is a, who is a catch, she is the fair maiden. The man who is a catch, which is the dragon slayer. And the prince who is a catch, who is usually handsome, stupid, and rich. But both of these catch of a man men are wooed by the fair maiden. The fair maiden is wooed by either. It's preferential for her. But for the prince and the slayer, they both want the fair maiden. And let's not forget about the other archetype in most stories. The witch. The witch is typically a bitch. She usually is the cause of a hardship. Always single right? Always single. Hates the fair maid. Says she doesn't like the catch of a man and is a saboteur or sabotager. Tour tager. I don't know. According to fairy tale, dragon slayers are those who have equal powers as that of a dragon. And as the name depicts, they can kill a dragon. So a dragon slayer in today's society would be men who had dragons and they killed them. Fair maiden, an unmarried, young, beautiful woman. She is kind, keen, caring. She doesn't complain. She solves her dilemmas and doesn't dwell in a world of woes. Then there's the witch. The woman is thought to have magical powers, especially evil ones. And then a bitch is a pejorative slang for a person, usually a woman, who is, listen to this, belligerent, unreasonable, malicious, controlling, aggressive, dominant. Have you met more fair maidens or more witchy bitchies? So ladies, you want a strong man. What do you think men want? They also want a strong woman, but strong in your natural way, not in a competitive way. When there's a creeper outside, he's the strong one that investigates and beats the guy's ass if need be. And you're the strong one who's not shrieking or losing control of her emotions. You're also not competing for the job of beating the ass of the creeper. You're strong by being prepared and ready to act as a backup, but mostly to calm him and be with him after he's done this very courageous thing. If a man wants you to protect him, you're probably not going to fuck him. That's not the kind of guy that gets the girl. Men want to provide. Men are possessed with a different inclination than women. A man protects and provides for his woman when they can, when he can, and the woman pleases the man when she can. They both instinctively come to us. But again, about the propaganda, fairy tales are changing. Have you noticed that? The fair maiden isn't so fair anymore. Now is she? She's turning into an all-powerful, know-it-all, does-it-all, who saves the prince, who is a better fighter than the dragon slayer. It's an unrealistic expectation, and it hurts everyone. I sincerely wish that men would take up the sword once again so women could be the fair maiden. Or maybe women should become the fair maiden again so men can pick up their sword. I don't know, but something has to give because right now we have women who staunchly believe that men should protect women while women try to destroy the family, while women emasculate men, while women complain about the patriarchy while trying to gain control of it so that the matriarchy is in control, while they scream how it's their right to murder their children, their children, not the man's children. That is unless they decide to keep it. And then it is the man's child because he's expected to pay until they're 18 or, or, or older. And the thing is, some men, some men are defending them while they rampage, which only makes them more indignant when they come across a strong man who won't. It fills them with rage and then they tantrum. We are heading towards an event horizon where the youth of yesterday who were raised by TV screen and an education system that has replaced God with government. Both religions, mind you. Both with radical followers. Both with appointed leaders and priests. Both with heretics. Both with zealots. And just like religion won't go away, it just mutates. Submission won't go away either. It just mutates. Now women have a hard time submitting to a good man. And men have a hard time being a leader worth submitting to. And both are submitting to the new state religion. <sighs> Young women say the things they think they should say and act the way they think they should act, which is tough like men, but unlike men, they are intolerant and unfriendly to femininity. And because of that, they're totally missing what it actually is to have strength as a woman. So they fight strong men, thinking that's the natural response. They bully the heretics. They compete with men. When a lady, though, a fair maiden, finds an alpha man, a dragon slayer, let's say, she rejoices and gleefully gives over the reins. Women, even strong women, are naturally less intrinsically masculinely dominant. And when everyone assumes their role again, men and women fit snugly together. Two peas, one pod. 
My hope is that enough individuals, peas, come together and find their pod. And enough of those, we can beat the weeds. And I do feel bad for women these days, especially young women. It seems like they're being sold a bag of bullshit, which is feminism. They buy it because it's trendy. It's expensive. It costs them their happiness and their youth. It's heavy. They carry it everywhere. But it has pretty packaging and everyone else is buying it. So why wouldn't they? They don't want to be left out. And I think the package says something like this. Carry everywhere, but don't open until you're 35. And then when they're 35 and they open it, it's a stinking bag of shit with a note that says, Ha, gotcha. There's another reason I think many women don't want to submit to their husband. It's simple and it's understandable. They have a lack of trust of their husband or potential. They think that their husband or potential will take advantage of their submission or that their husband will abuse their power. All of these fears are warranted when you choose a man who is not yet a man. And I get a lot of contentious remarks about me donating my belief system, defining what I think a real man is, but I hold firm. Here's my definition of a real man. A real man has spent his time, or most of it, cultivating himself. He's strong, patient, stoic, capable, accepting. He does what he can and accepts what he can't. He doesn't accept the wrong in the world, but he sees the wrong and does not let it penetrate his world. Women can be duped, absolutely. A well-constructed man will protect you from a bad man. Not be the bad man, but you have to give something in return. And it's not money. <laughs> he has his wife's best interest and trust, and he doesn't exploit it. And every year, the trust and respect that he, she has of him grows and the love and affection that, she, that he has towards her grows because you are doing the right thing. You are fitting in your role. At least that's what I think. Well, what do you think? All right, everyone, today is Tuesday. I will see you on Friday, which happens to be Christmas. I hope you're all well. Let me know your opinions in the comments. Okay, goodbye.